excited to show you all of the improvements to Android 12, the newest release of our open platform. Android 12 has proven to be a very interesting animal since it was announced back in May. We're kind of used to Android updates being loaded with features, but on a visual iteration of what we know, which makes sense. I mean, drastic changes are usually polarizing and can make or break the user experience. The thing is, uh, Material U is precisely that. It's impactful and substantial in its visuals, which means that, uh, yes, it's very different to the Android we know. So much so that even if I've been using it since the launch of the public beta, I still haven't gotten around to liking it, and that's actually not a good thing. Now, what many people don't know is that Material U is really just a skin on top of the real stock Android, and I'm glad to see that other OEMs have actually decided to go a different route for all of us who prefer the familiar user interface that we've really come to love. This is ColorOS 12, Oppo's latest and greatest update, which is actually the first Android 12 update from an OEM, and also one of the purest approaches I've seen so far. The changes are so vast that we decided to partner with Oppo in helping us make this video to tell you why you should consider it. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's dive in. So quick disclaimers before we begin. My experience with ColorOS 12 has so far been on a test build of the global version. So yes, Google Play services are working in their full glory. That leads me to my next disclaimer, and it's that this is not a review. That comes later as we get the final build. And also, anyone interested in our review of this Oppo Find X3 Pro that I tested it on, I'll be linking to that separately. I think the most important reason why I've liked my time with ColorOS 12 is that even if it is Android 12, it's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It starts by looking familiar, it adopts Google features and apps where they are more useful to avoid duplicate apps, and then provides added value and exclusive perks to Oppo that are pretty subtle. It's as if they're not trying to force their services on you like other approaches. You have the flexibility to be in control of what you enable or disable in most of what I'm about to mention. There is a skin that resembles Material U coming soon, but it's great to see that even that is optional. Oppo calls this their inclusive design language, where the OS adopts the best of all worlds. So yes, the home screen is the basic stock you know. Even the iconography and the overall finish has been enhanced. You have the Google feed at the left of the launcher as it should be, and then you have as many panes of applications to the right, or you also have the flexibility of choosing if you want an app tray in the home settings. Now, once you swipe down from the top, you'll start to see that instead of massive buttons, ColorOS 12 keeps the stock Android approach for more of these to be easily available. If you want to change the colors of the theme, all you have to do is change the wallpaper and the rest of the user interface elements will adapt to it. Now, the inclusion to stock Android then continues once you dive into settings. The icons are now bolder, the text is larger and easier to read, all with the purpose of reducing clutter. Oppo also integrated 100% of Google's new privacy features as we saw at Google I.O., meaning even the option for 24-hour permissions is included, along with dedicated buttons to disable your microphone or camera completely, in addition to broader location restrictions. All 22 Android accessibility features are also here to keep things standard, and Oppo added some of its own with enhancements for color blindness and color weakness. Even in elements like the phone application, Oppo has opted to use Google service instead and remove the extra app. From the navigation gestures, to the ability to call on the Google Assistant with your voice, to the gesture from the corner, this user interface provides your standard Android experience if you want it to. Now, I think that my biggest problem with stock Android is that it's pretty bare bones. It is visually appealing, it has some neat tricks, but I don't consider it to be the most productive. And this is where I feel that ColorOS 12 shines because it doesn't stop there. In the little things, I like how you can customize your always on display in unique and colorful ways that are not just great visually, but also useful. 
I consider the privacy features to be better than most. For example, I love that notifications are not visible on your lock screen until your face or fingerprint is detected. There's even an anti-peeping feature that doesn't show the contents of notifications if the phone detects that more than one person or even just someone else is looking at the screen. I also like that I can lock any application to only work with my fingerprint. If you want to go even deeper into how to protect your phone and your data, Phone Manager is your dashboard for all of those essentials in one place. And if what you want is to only make sure your kids stay away from your personal stuff, there's a complete kid space where you can define the only applications they'll access along with time limits and biometric restrictions to exit the mode. Oppo was also bringing its new set of emoji by the end of the year to personalize your experience in form of expression. The company claims that it'll be the smoothest experience within Android 12 and offering up to 200 plus customization options. Then there are the big things when it comes to productivity. You can multitask by having certain applications in a floating window in order to call on them when needed and you can resize these as you see fit. You can also call on your favorite apps from a smart sidebar, which spares you the need to go to the home screen and find them while you work. And then there are a ton of options for gestures. Three finger translate is just as it sounds. Tap and hold and it'll translate what's on the screen or use Google Lens to translate what you see. Now, legacy screen off gestures to launch the camera drawing an O or controlling your music are also here. And then features I appreciate like a mute notifications mode that's better than a full do not disturb along with a focus mode and bedtime mode. Now, even if Oppo has always been good about performance and endurance, there are new power efficiency features like one tap power saving and even insights on what applications are draining your battery. There's a new quantum animation engine 3.0, which makes the user interface feel more responsive, even if high refresh rate is already available on most of its flagships. And then there's AI system booster and GPA 2.0, which allows optimal performance during gaming. And I don't just mean added power. That's what most companies get wrong is it just drains the phone quicker. Oppo's new feature reduces RAM consumption, battery drain, and even heat emission. Oppo claims performance will barely age a meager 2.75% in three years, which does make this a good investment in the long term. Now, maybe one of the updates I'm looking forward to most is PC Connect, which is as complete as it sounds. Later this year, you'll be able to connect your computer, have cross-device integration of your content, have the option to cross-edit features, and do quick file transfers. So yes, this is our first look at ColorOS 12. So far, I'll say that I like how Oppo continues to simplify its approach. There's really no need to reinvent Android and its user experience. And I'm the kind of person that actually prefers added value that I can choose to use or ignore. I also feel that this is another major reason why the company is committing to even broader software support. They're confirming monthly security updates plus three major software updates to their Find X series, quarterly security updates plus two major software updates for their Find Lite, Neo, Reno, F, and K series. Their A series does benefit from the quarterly security updates, and most of their phones will get one major software update depending on RAM, even if we did hear about a lighter alternative to ColorOS being a possibility. That said, keep in mind this is for their unlocked phones as carriers have a different process. Stay tuned to Pocketnow.com as we'll provide details on when ColorOS 12 will be arriving to your device. I do know this Find X3 Pro will be the first in case you're already using one. Let us know what you think about ColorOS 12 in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me cover more updates. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.